To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Well, good morning, homesteaders and gardeners. It is bright and early. You guys are up and ready to go. It is getting into the holiday season, and we want to spread some joy. Last last episode, it wasn't so much joy. This one is going to be all about joy. We're going to talk about our garden wins in our garden. And it's so important, I think, to talk about this, don't you? Yeah, and we... we like flip the coin on do we do the wins first or the the fails first it was pretty clear that we wanted to wrap up with the wins it's absolutely yeah. important <laughs> <laughs> yeah it definitely is um you know it's one of those things on the show i feel like we talk a lot about failures and problems and stuff like that and i don't know i feel like we just need an outlet to talk about good stuff because you can learn from other people's failures, but you can also win from other people's losses or learn from other people's wins. Wow, mm-hmm. I just got that all screwed up. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm definitely, I think, so one note, and I didn't mention this last episode, but it's the growth in our, our platform here that we are able to speak to and walk through, you know, uh, missteps and and all out like fails, you know, struggles more often. Yeah. Right. That's the growth in our, our podcast and this platform. And I think that, you know, quiet is kept. I don't I don't think it's a misery loves company kind of thing. I think, though, um, a lot of what we do in the garden is like a solo sport. We've talked about this. This is a couple of years ago. We talked about, you know, kind of the solo dolo gardener. And because you do that alone, it's not as easy to detect if your struggle is normal Right. You know, yeah. and then um, because a lot of what we see on, on the socials is like the, you know, huge cabbage, you know, like, it's very curated. Experiences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which and is not to be that that's a, I, understandable. Yeah. Because people are drawn to that as well. Right. You know, Um it's almost like the this platform is a little bit more academic. We can like kind of dig in a little bit more. But when we look at something like the wins, I think it's so great because for us individually, we get a chance to step back and recognize no, there's a lot. We basically, you know, reduce this list just for time. Like there are many more wins than what we're going to even talk about. And yeah. I hope that it's giving people permission to celebrate the thing that maybe they didn't even realize that, you know, everyone's applauding you for like it's an absolute win you know so that's my perspective on talking about what went really 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 well well first of all i do want to say this um you're wrong because (laughs) misery does love company and i love it more than anything when somebody else's broccoli crop fails just as hard as mine did i just i feel their pain i feel like we have a connection at that exact moment when i see it or read it that you and i are connected in this problem and we can cry together and I, I've with no problem resting my head on their shoulder crying as they can do to me because you know what? It's just sad, <laughs> but I mean, and, and the off side of it, I mean, all jokes aside, it is, it's just, it's good to, to, to finish out the year thinking about what we did successfully and the wins and the losses are the same thing. There is way more losses Mm-hmm, then we mm-hmm. give you, be- and it's all time constraint, but those were the worst of the worst. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, we'll say this. Um, it is that time of year, and if you want to support the show, there's a myriad of ways you can do it. If you get some Christmas money and you need to buy some stuff for your garden, check out the Amazon link below. It's got all the products that we use and recommend. You can become a patron You can be an Apple subscriber and get an extra episode a month. And we're kind of working our way through what we're doing in our gardens or for our gardens per month for the next year. So that hopefully that will help you. And being that Batavia is in zone 6A and I am now in 8B, I graduated, everybody. (laughs) We got you covered. You know what I mean? So if you're in between us or outside of us, you can kind of adjust as needed, but um, you can find support us that way. And also we lowered all of our prices on the 
t-shirts below and all of our swag. So check that out. Somehow they raised all the prices and I fixed it. So I uh, go back and look at that and um, show some, some, little, some support for the Backyard Gardens podcast. And that being said, I think Batavia needs to start off because as usual, ladies first. And she's not going to be upset about it today because it's a win. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to get in front of this one thing that, you know, talk about how our gardens are different. Garden styles are different. Right. So my number one win was covering vegetables that typically fall victim to the cabbage worm. And that's super important to me because I've grown a lot of vegetables in past years and this year. Your cabbages, your collars, your broccoli, your kale that um, the cabbage worm in particular just feast on. Now, I don't know for certain if it had a positive impact in this way, but I had less aphids and less white flies. I think that's more of the weather than the act of covering. But I had some damage to uh, some plants right at the beginning of maybe summer, late spring, early summer. I had like one outbreak um, and it was like before I covered it. But once I got past that, I didn't have any damage that was cabbage worm related. And I've had like, you know, not exactly near tears, but some super frustrating years where I didn't take the steps I needed to take. And, and it's, you know, some level of decimation in the garden. So absolute win. More leaves went in my bellies and the bellies of others, um, which actually one B for me would be, I was able to gift many more things from my garden that I have in previous years. And that makes me happy. That's a win. Yeah. I mean, if you're not giving it to the pests, you can help yeah. other people out. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's a, that's an important thing to think about. I've, I, you know, it's funny. I've never thought about it until now, but I mean, it, if you can keep the pests off in whatever method you choose, mm -hmm. you're going to get more. And then mm -hmm. you're going to get more to either preserve mm -hmm. or to give away or, you know, whatever. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. There's Personally. one other thing that I didn't do this year, but I am thinking about it. No, that was for another episode. That's a loss. No, no, we can't. no, 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 no. It's, oh, um, no. this is, we're going to be in year one in 2024. So just if you're counting, it's just it's not oh, year okay. one even now, but some of my uh, crops had really produced, you know, in great quantities. And I'm teetering on how long do I leave those crops that I can grow basically all year in the garden? Do I pull some of those early to make room for some, you know, more diversity? Again, beginning thoughts. <laughs> beginning thoughts. <laughs> beginning thoughts. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> well, my win, um, and I'm going to go along with you on the pest front, was the my squash. Um, I did really good with squash this year. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't great, like perfect, but it was what I had expected. Um, the squash vine board did ultimately get it, but I was able to stave it off until the plant was just about done anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, it was, it's kind of like a, a good moment, bad moment, basically. And if you can, I don't really consider this, but for the term, um, I use organic sprays and the squash was the dirtiest air quotes crop in my garden because I was spraying it every two weeks with mm -hmm. spinosite or BT to combat it. And it seemed to work. So I was a very religious in spraying for the um, the little bastard and taking it, getting it under control, and I was able to get squashes off of it. The downfall of that was is I gave it too much nitrogen in the process, so I didn't get as much fruits from it. But at the same time, I was trying to do that because if it was getting damaged, I wanted it to push more growth so it could recover. So now that I kind of have that under control next year, I can kind of stand back on the, um, on the fertilizers and then get more of a harvest. So it worked out for me. And I also was able to dwindle down what I do and don't like to grow as far as squash goes, which made it even better. I fell in love with patty pan squash. 
Hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. eliminated yellow squash completely. Don't oh. care about yellow squash at all. I think that's generally a good move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My mom uh, almost spit in my face when I told her that, but <laughs> she just doesn't know about Patty Pan yet. I um I think that's a huge talk about like I don't know for these are we supposed to start with the high or start with the low of the win? That's a huge win though. I mean it is. It yeah, is. it's like I mean, squash it, wars every year in my garden now. It is, and I mean I remember I did a video and um I was showing I was like man this squash bed is just killing it right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful. I have not had squash plants that big and that voluptuous for many many years you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and it was just it was constant now i mean like i said it did end up going downhill but it wasn't terrible it wasn't like mass destruct like i hope i get one like i was getting quite a few squash off of it but um next year what i'll do is to improve is i will fertilize less and then do a second planting because ultimately what ended up happening is that bed ended up sitting more empty and I was letting plants sit longer. Mm-hmm. So I'll just plant more. I was which looking means for, starting more seeds. Yeah, I was looking for my notepad. It's downstairs where I have. It's like definitely growing. Uh, maybe not growing. Like it's some, it's some type of, you know, column like that. And squash again is on the, you know, it speaks summer. Um, but... Is it worth the trouble for me anymore? So I still have, I'm undecided. I still have some time. I actually have a few weeks to decide for me to finalize my garden plan. But good job. Um, so this is number two on my list. And this is, I think I ordered these by like at what point in the season? Because this really should have been number one if we're going with the first one is the most important to us. Or it should be number five if we're going with the last one. Should be like ending with a bang. Yeah. But it's number two right now. Um, I grew my tomatoes in a in all new spaces, <clears throat> and I was nervous. You know? like, yeah, I, I know you were. You were not. You didn't even want to talk about it. Yeah, I didn't do it last year because I was nervous. Like I was. I thought that there was the potential of all out failure. So this wasn't even like come just coming off of 2022, which was a pretty crappy year. Cause I got, you know, I got some tomatoes, not as many as I wanted. Like I was concerned that it would be a complete flop. Right. right. You know? And, um, and the reason primarily was the space I grew them. Um, I think I had five tomato plants, um, two pineapple which i don't know if i need one or two next year but two pineapple one of my favorite varieties um a cherokee purple boxcar willy and one roma plant in the space is around like seven feet by 14 no no 14 feet by four feet there are two beds that are uh, basically um right next to each other and it's sitting on my concrete patio now i've long proved that i can grow some wonderful produce on my concrete patio there's about probably on a good day eight inches of soil i didn't know if fruiting plants like tomatoes how they do and i had no blossom in right on my tomatoes i had some peppers stuffed in there too i had a little bit of blo- bro- excuse me blossom in right on my um a couple of peppers on a couple of pepper plants, but all in all, you know, everything that came out of those beds was beautiful all the way until the very end up until like, you know, the uh, first frost Eve. And that was huge for me because now I know that I have almost a kind of twin ish bed sitting next to it. I feel comfortable with growing tomatoes in the space next to it next year. It also, um, and I grew some right under my windowsill, which is like in a shadier spot. Um, And so, again, that produced well, that's in the front yard garden. And so what it allowed me to do was kind of, as the young kids say, I don't I don't know if the young kids are saying it or the older kids are saying it like where to plant tomatoes has had me in a chokehold. And the idea of it limiting me from my thought of being able to rotate my crops. It's really I really struggle with it. So it's not just I planted in those spaces. I planted in those spaces and I provided some type of netting where I think I lost one tomato this year to uh, squirrels. One. And I mean, I, I, there are, there was a lot of poundage coming out of my garden from a, t- 
tomato perspective. Yeah, you had a you had a banger year. I yeah, mean. yeah, really good tomato year. Um, and we'll talk about next year. I actually did a lot of canning of tomatoes. Um, most of it was uh, farmers market tomatoes because um, I needed to get to a volume, right? And so we haven't, you and I haven't talked about this uh, much. The amount that can be produced from your own garden and times the quantity that you really need to produce something like sauce, right? So I think I've cracked the code for me. So now the decision after coming off of a high for tomatoes going into next year is how many tomatoes do I really want to grow next year? Well, everybody, welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we have the tomato hacker joining us today. (laughs) She's here. She's here, everybody. Roll out the red carpet and throw the tomatoes on the ground. She's going to stomp them and can them. Yeah. yeah. I'll make a tomato wine. (laughs) Do you know what the painful thing is? Hmm. You want me to step on it real quick? That's the beauty of crop rotation. You learn about how you can grow in different areas when you don't, when you step outside of that box and don't get stuck in a routine. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, I don't like you your tone. You hate me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think back and I, I wanna, don't want to belabor this point, but I'm trying to think back of when I felt like I was in the clear. Um I think it was the point like somewhere around early August when green tomatoes started to actually turn to ripen and be just fine. I think is when I realized it. it was very clear early on the plants would grow, but the fruit producing is a different story. And to look at a year where I didn't have I had once made a plant in the front yard garden. We talked about that last week on the episode of what didn't go well. That was like I don't even count it as a plant that I really grew, but no disease across my tomato crops and tomato again the whole thing is in new spaces i've never grown tomatoes in the spaces that i grew them in this year and that is huge for me um and it it just it's really opened the door in my mind so yeah you know i'm not going to add this in one of mine but it's on this subject about planting and tomatoes in particular in different places you know um the wild garden you and i've talked about it it struggles to get enough sun and i put roma tomatoes in the bed that gets Mm -hmm. the least amount of sun Mm -hmm. and i I went all in i was like i'm just gonna do it and see what happens and i got a full-blown harvest off that like you know 15 cans of tomatoes off of it i was shocked that i got that much so um and i had never done that before you know i'd never put it in that spot so i was Mm -hmm. really nervous but it worked out great so, I mean, it, there is a benefit to it, you know what I mean? And it, it, it's tough to do. And it's it's one of those things, I mean, it's like, you know, my family says, you get nervous as a whore in church, boy, when you start doing stuff like that and stepping outside the box. Mm-hmm. But when it works out, it works out. But I was prepared for it to fail, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I was happy with that. Yeah. I guess you need one for me, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll take one if you have one. Well, I'll go all the way back. No, actually, this is going to be a two-parter, but... It'll be my second and third one. Um, my second one is I I changed the way I plant. Mm. And Batavia and I were talking about this. A little, we were talking about something else, but this came up. Um, you know, I don't have... I, I mean, do you think my garden's big? Mm-hmm. Okay, so there I have a There are a couple a big- of shots you do. Go to Sandy Bottom Homestead, guys, on YouTube. There's a couple of shots that he has when he does his videos. And I kind of sit back like, yeah, that's, that's quite a bit of space you're growing in. Okay, so I've never really considered it really big because, you know, I've seen people with much bigger plots. But mm-hmm. I've always planted my garden like I did when I had one or two beds. So I do like a block of this, a block of that. You know, Mm -hmm. a block of this here and there and really get into the weeds about um, companion planting and stuff like that. And this year I kind of got fed up with it and I started in winter and went most of the way through. I did out of the what I grow out of this year. Eight beds, I think. No, nine beds. Two of them were mixed planting and most of them were just like either families or like a solid vegetable. Mm -hmm. And it worked out really good for me because I was able to treat the, you know, whatever pest was there. I was able to space it out appropriately per plant. When the bed was ready to be emptied, it was all emptied at once Mm -hmm. and then I could replant. 
um, you know, just overall, it was it was a success for me. And I was really happy with the way it worked out. So um, and I also instead of digging holes to put the plant in, I dug furrows going all the way down and put fertilizer all in the furrows at planting. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always done pre-planting fertilizer, but this year I did like significantly more and it it made I I really have to say I think it made a huge difference in my garden this year. Um I I I can't express any other way like when I had that whole bed of squash like I knew that there was going to be an issue in that bed but I knew what the issue would be mm-hmm. and I knew when it was empty it was empty. When my potatoes were done, I was able to do what I wanted to do with that and then get into what will be my fourth or fifth win. So there's a little preview for you, (laughs) but, um, I do have to say of all the things that I've done this year that were a win, one of them was definitely, um, using the planter app. It's an amazing thing. It's a supporter of the show and it's a supporter for a reason because it's very easy to use. It's a drag and drop interface. It helps us plan our gardens out to, I mean, to the T And we were just talking on the um, subscriber episode how when we plan our gardens, we don't just have an A and a B. I mean, I made the comment that I go all the way to like plan Q. (laughs) And it's easy just to delete and restart. It's visually pleasing. Drag and drop interface. If you're into companion planting, it tells you the companions, the combatives, gives you visual cues, tells you why they're companions or why they're combative, helps you visually with crop rotation. It's available on... Um, Google and Apple stores. It's the planter app. And if you use the link below, you will get a significant discount on a lifetime subscription to it. So check it out. I believe it's somewhere in the range of 20 to 25% off. You can't get a discount like that anywhere else, everybody. So check it out below. It's the planter app. It's spelled P-L-A-N-T-E-R. And if you go to their website, you click on it, from the thing it'll automatically give you the discount and you can use it on your tablet phone and pc love it or leave it you better gang way (laughs) that's some vanilla ice for y'all yeah yeah so um (laughs) so the discount does apply if you prefer a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription but there are a couple of things that i go all in on and do the lifetime and the planter app was one of them there's just no i mean there's no way to beat that deal well do you know Uh, how i found it mm -mm. i was looking for something to do on my computer And I was coming across different stuff. It was like $200, $300. I'm Mm -hmm. like, there is absolutely no way that I'm paying this kind of money. And then I came across, I was a very early adopter of it and, um, you know, instantly fell in love. So it's definitely worth it. And it's, it's, I mean, for the price that you pay, you get more than what you've paid for out of it. Yeah. I think there's always that apprehension on um, whether or not you're going to use it. Right. You know, and then you're paying 200 bucks for something. It's like, am I going to really use it? Yeah. Um, and and I think that one, it's, you know, it's kind of take a chance on it because, again, it's it's so reasonably priced. And then two, you can hear from people, you know, whether it's over on the Facebook page, the Backyard Gardens Community Garden yep. on Facebook or if it's from you or I when it comes to our experience with it. it's good stuff, man. Good stuff. And the creator is in the Facebook group, too. So mm-hmm, be sure mm-hmm. to check that out. So check it out, everybody. That being said, Batavia is going to give you her next win, and I bet it's going to be a good one. What do you think? Oh, jeez. I, 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 she's the lead. <laughs> I, I got away from my list. I was clicking around here. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So it connects to the way I look at your garden and how I see it. And it also connects to the way you describe, you know, most of your beds had a single crop or a plant family in it. And so I have, um, geez, I think it's about of notable size of like true garden bed size, like eight beds or something. Um, Everything else is like a cutout of space. Right. You know, so I count all of them like total, like even my two foot by four foot beds, I count them as a bed and all of those together. It's like twice as many. It counts like 16 or something. But true garden beds that are somewhere between seven feet long or bigger or larger and about four feet wide. Those are the beds that I consider like 
I'm looking at all of them in the same way because they're generally the same size. Um, right. But the win was finding the small spaces and making them worth my while, you know. So growing in some of the small spaces, I did, you know, various things like growing corn in a much smaller space than even recommended. You know, can I put a singular tomato plant here? How about if I grow beans in that two foot by four foot space, pole beans, right? right? Like, what can I really, is it enough? Can I get what I'm looking for out of that space? And all in all, it was a win over and over again. Um, I think I ended up getting like, um, it's a 36 inch round fire pit. Um, so it's, you know, you know, when I talk about that type of measurement, I think I ended up getting like 12 or 14, I could, the number could be off, pounds of white potatoes from there. You know, like that's a win when I think about, I grew cucumbers there like last season or the season before. Much better return on that growing space. Um, so yeah. Um, For me, and I I think this is true for a a lot of folks that maybe consider themselves urban gardeners, you don't have a row, a 20 foot row to grow in, you know, Um, you may not even have beds that are like, you know, basically in the same space and lined up. You it's nooks and crannies that sometimes you're you're needing to grow in. And so I feel like I really I don't want to say I cracked the code, but I just had a successful year when it comes to making the most out of some of those smaller spaces. Yeah, I mean, I think. You know, I've often thought this and I may have even said it, I may not have, but I think that's what makes or breaks the productivity of a garden Mm. is using those small spaces or even a homestead for that instance. I mean, look at what I did this year when I added the bees. I put in a small space Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I don't have much space there to use, but I mean, it's those little small spaces. I mean, they add up and it's amazing when you put a little bit of effort into it and i mean not to go back to another advertisement but you know with the planter app like it'll tell you the square footage that something needs and you can be very measured in what you do and i I think that works out i think that's so cool that you did that because now you know what you can grow in those other spaces Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know and that's why when we get stuck in routines that's not a good thing sometimes you don't you don't expand you don't grow yeah yeah, it no really helped intended. me not view these spaces as dead spaces or spaces yeah. I could just disregard, right? You know, and I look at it now and say, like, I have a whole strategy and I did the count after I stopped talking. It's seven, like, beds that are either seven feet long or larger, like from seven feet to 10 feet. So those, I mean, I'm really working with some space there, but everything else, like probably the other half of my garden is something different. Um, And I've come up with a whole strategy into how to plant in the more typical bed sizes and then the smaller nooks and crannies. Um, And that's not something I came into the year planning to do. It kind of just came into you know the light as i looked at what i ended up doing um and it's i'm really excited actually going into next year with that strategy because i've been a little bit stressed about that and i've tried to not do the woe is me this little bitty corner of a bed is all i have to grow in says the person that dug up her entire front yard yeah (laughs) well you know you're gonna eventually run out of space unless you buy more Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i don't think we we can afford to buy any more so there's that And I've been dropping hints at my neighbors and they're not picking up on what I'm throwing down. (laughs) You know what? They need to get educated on the situation. (laughs) But I mean, seriously, though, like if you, you know, taking this into account, if we really and I hate to harp on the planning portion of it, but I don't even want to say planning. But if you know and you grow, you know, within time, Mm -hmm. you're going to figure out where you can put things like bush beans are like the perfect example you know but even a tomato even a determinant tomato you mm-hmm. know roughly how big that tomato is going to get yeah you know what i mean like i know this year when i planted out my fall tomatoes and i put four tomatoes in that bed i didn't space them out correctly but when i i remember sitting back and looking and be like you knew they were going to get that big what what were you thinking mm-hmm. like you knew how big that plant was yeah. going to get ben what's wrong with you yeah. <laughs> so it just caused the problems for yourself yeah, no, it's it's the and sometimes that happens for me when I'm I'm actually trying to plant in the moment yeah. versus planning ahead. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to give you my next one, I guess. I, I feel like I need to take my shoe off and stick it in my mouth first or I'm going to have to get I'm going to have to call my wife and tell her to start cooking some crow. 
<laughs> um, adding drip drip irrigation to my garden was a giant win. Um, I had reservations about it. I don't know. I did a a, a video about it on um, Sandy Bottom Homestead and told my whole story. And if you've listened to the show for any amount of time, you know that I did not like it, did not believe in it. And the problem was, is I was buying cheap crap. Essentially, I was trying to be cheap. And <clears throat> the older I get, you know, I've aged quite a bit since we've started the show. I feel like I've been doing it for. <laughs> okay. I mean, every year goes by. You know what I mean. Speak but, for yourself, um, I, there, I'm, brother. I'm start. Well, you know, the years have gone by literally, mm-hmm. and I'm starting to see that the cheap option is not always the right option. And so I jumped off the deep end. I didn't even hold my nose, and I I did a belly flop. I mean, I just went for it, and I bought. A system i built it i designed it myself i put it in had no clue how it was going to work out and i used zero sprinklers this year and had better growth um i didn't have a bunch of crazy weeds going on or diseases or anything like that it was a really big win for me um i was even worried that if I wanted to, this is so perfect. This is coming out right now. If I wanted to expand my garden that I would not have the amount of water pressure needed to expand it. Mm -hmm. And I expanded my garden and I have the water pressure. Now I don't know if I can go anymore, (laughs) but that's a different story, Mm -hmm. but it worked. And it was definitely, um, just like I don't know maybe there's a theme here getting out of that routine of using a sprinkler taking the cheap way out and doing it you know I wasn't getting good growth before I was having dry spots which led to dead spots and moving forward um, it just it worked really good so I think there's still a space for sprinklers like direct sowing and stuff like that but even then I've got it designed so I don't really need it so it kind of it worked out pretty good. I'm, I'm I'm happy with the way everything turned out in the long run. Do you think if you had, let's say, the other attempts you made to kind of get your irrigation down, let's say those didn't happen and you started off with drip irrigation, do you think that you would be as successful this year if you were just starting out kind of out of the gate? I have my opinion on your success there, but... I don't know. I mean, that's that's a really hard question to answer because I always used... No, I take that back. I used um, my first adult garden that I had. I used soaker hoses and I was successful there. Um, but then I think something happened and I got tired of it and switched to a sprinkler on that even. So, um, But I was successful with that. But I didn't understand because, again, this is like drip tape. Mm-hmm. You know, one foot spacing for emitters versus a soaker hose which is just releasing water everywhere Mm -hmm. all over it and based on the limitations i had with water pressure and stuff like that it didn't work out well and now with this i'm also added in a um um, fertilizer injector so i have that option as well so that worked out good Mm -hmm. what are your opinions Um, so i've watched the last four years you've been gardening much more longer than that and obviously you've been working on watering your garden much longer than that but i've watched the last four years and as a viewer i can really appreciate one of my least favorite terms but it's appropriate here the journey that you've gone on i think that you had to go through what you went through yes to know exactly how you wanted to set it up with the 2023 garden i think you started last fall though didn't you uh, i put it in like january or okay. february so i think you had to go through that but that's That's kind of a belief in life that I have. Like some of our experiences we have to go through to not only appreciate where we are now, but to be able to make the decisions that we're making now. So I think that you would have had some success, but you would have probably been tweaking it, the drip irrigation more because you would have had those previous experiences to account for like you did. And, And basically you came into 2023 knowing you wanted to make this adjustment, this adjustment, this adjustment. Um, so I'm super happy one that you stuck with it. I mean, you can't 
kept trying to tweak a thing and then realizing there was a time where he ne- needed to abandon a particular method and try something wholly new. That's um that's hard to do in general and it's hard to do out loud, meaning like in front of the garden world. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, I mean, it was one of those moments too where I w- I remember last fall I was tweaking um, my setup that I had made and I was like, man, it is just not working. Mm. And I realized I was like, I can't get a sprinkler to shoot the water far enough. I'm getting dry spots and I've got diseases. I was like, I got to figure something out. And that's mm-hmm. when I realized that like, okay, your garden's grown now to a space that it's not really working because I was trying to get it all on one whack, you know, mm-hmm. so I didn't have to go. Cause if I have to go out and I have to change something like, Oh, let me turn on the water here and turn it off here. I'm going to fail every time. I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So it was really important to me that I did it. And even the greenhouse, it's, it's so like, it's changed the game in the greenhouse completely. That's, and then that alone is enough for it to be on the win list. The impact it has on the greenhouse. Congratulations, man. I'm proud of you for sticking with it. And then this is an official cracking of the code. I'm not going to be down on myself. Like my, I mean, it's like, um, my cracking of the code was a special episode. Yours is like, you know, the um, the mini series, you know, they do like four episodes or something. Yeah. That's what yours was with the, the irrigation. Good job, buddy. Yeah, it's, it's intense. But, um, you know, well, once I, I spent the money, I was like, I'm not backing out. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. What am I going to do? I got to dig up all my ground and put everything underground and pull it out. Like, no, cut it out. Yeah, I've done this with furniture. I've done this. Fortunately, I've not had this mistake when it comes to the, to, um, to appliances, which can be pricier, but, you know, go cheap, go cheap, and then realize, you know what? All right, yeah, yeah I'm going to spend a few more dollars. That's not the story with everything, but some no. things it is. So, um, so yeah, yeah, good job. Let me say this in closing. If I would have never bought those other systems in this place that I live now, in this garden, mm-hmm. And I would have saved um, 50% of what I paid for this whole system that I have to water my whole entire garden. That was only piecing it together before. So you spent 50% more? No, if I wouldn't have. So if you add up everything, Mm -hmm. I spent, I mean, I'm just going to say I spent $400 Mm -hmm. on the system, right? Well, Mm -hmm. in previous years, I probably spent $200 trying to fix something. Uh Uh Not to mention my time. So, you know, I would have ultimately saved money in the long run mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now sometimes it bees like that yep you know you got to take the journey mm-hmm. all right so mine is going to be short i'm going to get in and out uh it is my use of containers this year so there's not a year that i've said i've absolutely duplicated kind of what i'm growing in containers what containers i'm growing in uh, where i'm growing them um, generally the uh, containers i've been growing in have been the same for a number of years and i've played around with you know lettuce here carrots in this container peppers in this container and i feel really really good i think i probably dropped down one year i had like 60 containers of various sizes you know, and for me, it's easier than in a place like where Ben lives because it's not scolding hot for many weeks on end. You know, that's always harder where you're managing containers and keeping them watered. Um, so that's not my garden experience. And, you know, my climate isn't like that, but it doesn't make it easy. You know, so the smaller containers are typically a little bit harder for me to manage. And so I didn't plant in as many of those this year. I right. focused in some of the larger containers. I actually, I'm looking because I have a bonus one win for this season. I actually um, planted out like in, you know, one month I planted out this set of containers. Next month I planted out this set of containers. And that really, really worked well for me as well because it wasn't this whole big project where I'm spending a whole week focusing on just containers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to look back at and make a couple of notes to try to take some of that forward. Um, it also, if you kind of think about those, like the, the main beds that I spoke of earlier, the other garden nooks and crannies, containers are folded in there as well, right? You know, so a, an example is, I haven't really figured out if, how bell peppers would do in containers. I see people on the internet grow them all the time. But beyond bell peppers, just based on the size they get, I'm confident I could grow every pepper that I ever grow in a container and yeah. use my raised bed space for other things. That's pretty big for me. You know? That's my all time favorite 
plant to put into a container. Same. So I think I agree with that. And so you you went to uniform sizes this year. Is that what you um, said? I I didn't. I use what I already had. Right. Yeah. Um, I have one stackable container that I've been growing in. Um, oh, that's right. You got the, the vertical. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The vertical planter. Um, but. Beyond that, I stuck with my 20 gallon containers. I stuck with my 10 gallon containers, my seven gallon containers, and then five gallon buckets. Like that basically was the, the type of size. I have one that's in between, it's like 16 gallons or whatever. So most things were about the same size. And the five right. gallons, I had nothing but, um, but peppers in, which again, do swimmingly well, even at that smaller size. And the majority of them were in my backyard. So that's the thing that I've played around with as well. Like I'll spread them out. Sometimes they're in the front yard and backyard. Sometimes the majority are in the front yard. And for me, since I'm still watering by hand, we're not digging into that right now. um, Having them in one place makes that whole experience a lot easier. Yeah. You know, it's very similar to how it's been easier for you to grill the same types of crops in the same bed. That same concept, your attention and what you need to do in that same space, it applies to where I'm growing and how I'm managing containers. We are talking to a man who just moved his container garden. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I wanted to move it to where everything, you know, it was, um, I had my green, I had a container in front of my greenhouse. And then I had a whole nother thing over like far away. And now that I've got drip system, I don't have a sprinkler hitting that container. So I had to water mm-hmm. that one container mm-hmm. and um, it kind of fell by the wayside. So this, so I moved all the other containers over by that one container. I adjusted it all mm-hmm. to keep it all together. And so hopefully I'll be able to, and I got a hose that goes out there now made it. So there's less friction. So yeah. hopefully that'll work out better in my favor. And it's just not you and I. I mean, I've seen people even share in the Backyard Gardens, Community Gardens Facebook page. Like not, they're not pointing that particular thing out, but when they share their gardens, you can see cluster is the word I was looking for. Clusters yeah. of containers. And there are, I'm sure, a number of reasons why, you know, they're growing that way. But kind of ease of access, ease of like basically like next to like, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing is it's like I have everything. Like I have my garden. Then I have my little container garden. Then I have to water stuff on my porch and then I have to water my bonsai mm-hmm. bench and I'm done. And it's not, let me go over here and do this one over here and let me yeah. walk 50 feet over here. Like as much as it would be nice to have it like that, it's just not realistic for me. Mm-hmm. Doesn't work. So, all right. My next one, and this seems kind of dumb, but for me, it just, I don't know. There's something about it. My lettuce this spring, it, it kind of fell by the wayside in my mind and I planted two eight foot rows of lettuce i couldn't eat it all because i was expecting <laughs> loss and i had zero loss mm-hmm. i grew um little gem lettuce which is one of my favorites it's only supposed to get like eight inches tall it ended up getting about two feet tall and you know because in the spring i don't grow the same as i do in the winter i don't do cut and come again i cut the whole head mm-hmm. so the whole idea was like you do multiple heads you get them and you cut them. So that's kind of where we went with that. And um, that whole bed in general was a win because I timed it out perfectly, man. If I do say so myself, may I add, Um, I had the lettuces in there. I had the cabbages in there. I was getting my doorknob, my 18th century doorknob cabbages, plucking them bad boys out, had all of my lettuces in there, getting them. And then I had the whole bed empty as soon as it was time to put my sweet potatoes in, like the whole thing just kind of, it was just poetic the way it came together. And it made me really happy. I was able to give away like probably 20 heads of lettuce to people, you know, which some people say like, Oh, that's not a big deal. But I mean, you go to the grocery store and you buy the lettuce and then you look at the lettuce. Like I was giving away. It was totally different. So much more on the plant. So um, it worked out really good, and we're going to try and replicate that this year. We'll see how it goes, but it was definitely a win in my book. You know, you know, I'm a lover of lettuce. That might be. be mm, all right. Yeah. yeah so take it easy. Collards, it easy. tomatoes and lettuce are probably my favorite things to grow. I'm not putting them in any particular order because, I mean, you guys know what order they would go in potentially the order that I just said um, but it's lettuce ain't cheap bad in the stores either that shoebox lettuce for us the lowest price I can get is like 
just under five dollars for the shoebox lettuce. Yeah. And every time you know how many of those containers I have, and I always think about, oh, why don't I take um, that? Why don't I take the um, lettuce that I grow to see how much of what I grow would fit into that shoebox? But anyway, I'll do that next year. Um, so my last one for myself would be watering. Surprisingly enough, I don't know how I managed it. Because oh, so for those that don't know, I'm intimidated by a few different things. And one of them is drip irrigation. So at this point, until my buddy Ben makes a trip to Chicago, I'm probably going to continue to water by hand. It's probably going to take him to come down here to get everything set up, which is always I've always viewed it as a challenge because my garden is so spread out. That could be a when cop out, your, but that's when does your the, garden f- f- um, defrost is about August or September? Defrost? Your soil. Your soil. When is it not frozen? I know it takes uh, like forever. I'm April? joking. Yeah, April for sure. Oh, I'm oh, okay. That was a joke. You, oh, yeah. I'm like, is he? Yeah. yeah Whatever, dude. It. It's okay. <laughs> 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 but speaking of, because I think our summers are cooler than a lot of folks, right? You know, so 90s, it's like a whole event. Like I mentioned this earlier in the season, like, cooling centers if it's like you know in the high 90s because it's not our norm um, and I think it has an, a positive impact on my garden when it comes to what I'm growing um, and so for watering I stayed on top of it I did turn my um, sprinklers on I had to I was away for a few days um, on travel and and I, there's nothing wrong with turning the sprinklers on don't get me wrong um, and so I set the timer and it was coming into one of the hotter days like when we were getting the high 90s but I didn't I didn't feel like I had many maybe not even any crops that just you know petered out because I underwatered them that's been the case in previous years like there's some especially for my containers some things where I'm just like oh well I mean toss this one because it's just yeah. it's you know from the point of no return um so it's not my long-term solution watering by hand because it does take a lot of time commitment i do work from home for my regular nine to five so i have some additional time like think about the time i used to use for commuting back and forth getting ready for work and so on yeah so i have you know that time to pour into other things um so i'm really really pleased with feeling like the garden didn't suffer by my hand, meaning the hand that I'm using to water. That's a big one, mm-hmm. you know, and I think, um, one of the key elements is, of a successful garden is making sure you, you get it watered. It's so simple, sun, food, and water. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you miss either one of those, you, I mean, you fail. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you can get it under control and the fact that you're doing it by hand is just amazing. I mean, let me just say that out loud. Yeah, I probably wouldn't believe me if I wasn't me. It's funny, I get the question probably maybe once every couple of months on some of my videos, mostly the longer form videos, where people say things like, what type of drip irrigation do you use? And I don't know if that's just because, you know, that's like the buzzwords, or people are like, there's no way she, I mean, like, water it by hand wouldn't even come into my mind. <laughs> like, I think it's probably yeah. the latter, though. Um, and it's, again, it's the smarter thing to do. But yeah composting make my own compost would be the smarter thing to do and we know where i sit with that hey but if you like doing it you like doing it whatever i don't know if i said who, i like it I, I, I tolerate it <laughs> who are we to tell you what to do you're an independent woman mm-hmm. all the ladies all the ladies all right you ready for me yep dramatic pause i want everybody to take this moment in because what i'm about to tell you will forever change the way you live Not really, but I was able to grow enough ground cherries or husk tomatoes, as I like to call them, to make husk tomato jelly. It has taken me 12 years to get two jars, small jars, three quarters of the way full of jelly. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. And it ain't good. Uh, congratulations. It's, not bad. it's yeah. not bad, but you know, it was yeah. it was a goal. And my son, I want to give him a special shout out. The precious child that he is. He drives me crazy and I love him. I said, all right, son, because his job is to to pick up the ground cherries off the ground. You know, mm-hmm. I told him like, man, I'm twice as tall as you. 
I, my back's bad. I mm. work on this all day. I was like, you go out there, you pick him up off the ground. He, he harvested them. We saved them. And I had him shuck or husk every single one of them oh, wow. as I made yeah. them. And he stood there with a smile on his face. <laughs> and we did it. And it's not, it's not bad, but it's not um, what I was cracked up to be. But it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Good so, job. Um, yeah. It was an uphill battle. I will tell yeah. you to say that. All right. So my last one, and this is the bonus. Um, so what is the, so what is it though? What are we doing? You got to tell them what we're doing. Well, no, 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 this, this isn't it. Oh, that's right. You yeah, got a, yeah, you got a, yeah, you got a yeah, bonus. Just the bonus. Cause I think we, you gave me one more than, than I think you needed to. So I'm going to just round it out. Um, and this is my garden memory. So the accuracy may be off, but this is the way I feel in this moment. I feel like I had the least amount of waste when it comes to what was produced in the garden and what I harvested and what I actually consumed. That's so it not wasn't true. zero waste, but I feel like over the years I've struggled with managing it all yeah. and I've let things go beyond their prime, you know, not more often than not, but you know, on more I said occasions. that's not true, but I was joking. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. More <laughs> occasions that I'd like, um, and so this year, and it's funny because this year is very different than let's say 2020. So 2019, it was the year that my garden flipped and became like twice the size, right? You know, so 2020 was the first pandemic year, and I was at home almost exclusively. And I still managed to have more waste that year as a comparison to, let's say, this year when I was definitely away from home more. Um, and that's huge. Like, there's a lot that we do. You know, there are a lot of benefits of the garden that's beyond actually getting the produce from the garden. But that's the main goal right? Yeah. <laughs> so, to actually consume it. And so super pleased with that. Um, and I just I don't know that I have a formula for why I did it did better this year but i did well good job cutting down on your waste yeah, zero waste you. is going to be hard farms yeah, have yeah. a lot of waste so mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. minimizing i think should be the goal yeah not eliminating absolutely. um okay so before we go on to the listener question of the day which we do have a good one um what is one thing you observed that i did well in my garden batavia you mentioned it the when before last and but I'm it's it's enough it's important enough to give another asterisk to it your timing this year and maybe you've been this good before and you've just started to show it to us you know so I followed you really closely <laughs> you know going back to like January and well I don't have dates and times written down Leonard does for everything you started and everything you grew I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on when you were starting things as seedlings I can rem- I could see you r- rubbing your hand on, on the like one inch seedlings like alright yep. they're coming along to when you got things planted in the garden and a part of this is there's also selfishness because this is one of the places is where I struggled the most and to be able to see it happen live and in action and see what it ends up producing going back to we're doing this for the food super impressive I've mentioned this a couple of times throughout the year but I mean I worked really hard on that last winter yeah if I could do it even 80% as well as you did I'd be as happy as a pig and you know what Uh, poo poo yeah, so great job, man. It's uh, it was impressive. Well, and I, I know it's not easy because I know how hard it is. <laughs> you know, once I sat down and took the time to figure it out, it became a lot easier. The question this year was, how is it all going to play out? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But ultimately, it was easier than I thought it would be. I just had to put like, I mean, I'm not even allowed. I had to put maximum effort into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I had to get myself organized. I had to make a chart and everything. And it really did help. So. And um, you had to have you. the discipline to follow the plan that you created. Like yeah. all of that matters, right? Yeah, but there's a good thing about the garden that I want to say really quickly. Nothing is exact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No measurement is exact. No weight is exact. No timing is exact. And that's I, I think that's what I like about it is like you feel like it needs, but you also know you have some leeway. Yeah. You just gotta be careful with how much leeway you get. Yep. How much you take, yep. Yeah. All right, so 
I mean, uh, I'm expecting that there's something that I did that you observed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Not yeah, a I damn can give thing. you some notes if you need. No, in all seriousness. <laughs> so you have, you are the person that knows the most about my garden beyond me. Literally, I'm the really person should that knows be. the most about you as well. Uh, we s- close, close. Yeah, Your mom might yeah, have me pretty beat. close, pretty, pretty. <laughs> you, you know, quiet is kept. You are the person I probably speak to the most, like hard stop. You and, know, and um, that's and it, it's important beyond to note garden it. stuff too, right? Yeah, you know? and it's important to note before I say this that was important to say. Your ability to pivot on the cage baby this year. Mm. was unparalleled and totally out of character for you and it was beautiful to see it was amazing because i know you didn't want to do it i know you had a dream of what that thing could be and you were able to do it you can wipe your eyes it's okay i could see welling up (laughs) (laughs) but it was you know it's not that's not you because you didn't have three years to make that change you had three months to make that change and you did it that was beautiful I appreciate it. Was it was perfect. And, and it, it is, I definitely get the connection on um, how well you know me. Um, and this, I don't know, I, sometimes these are things you don't recognize. They're very obvious to others. Like, so I'm going to say it, I'm going to keep moving and you're not going to say anything smart <laughs> aleck like, but <laughs> listeners may pick this up for me. Sometimes I can be very rigid about things, you know, right? <laughs> like, and so there is the way that I want to do it. And, you know, wild horses is what's needed sometimes. Yeah. And the cage baby was a dream that I had for years and what I wanted that thing to look like. And I planned on growing tomatoes in particular for years. And last year, we know we've talked about it throughout the year. And that's okay because sometimes we have things that escape us and that we struggle with. Um, And tomatoes they were that so a part of the first or the second item that i talked about like how tomatoes were a win i actually didn't put much stock into the switch like meaning once i actually committed to it i was fine with it but it took a lot of like not only am i abandoning the thing that i basically planned and spent a lot of money on right Two, I am taking a chance on something that may not produce at all. But what I know for sure is the other way is going to be a problem. Right. Um, and the, the the best part about this is I'm not in a rush to get back to the cage baby with tomatoes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there is a common thread here amongst this episode. And that's stepping out of our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you're new to the show, which I mean, thank you for joining us. You have to understand, this is version 2.0 of the cage baby that Batavia wanted. She Mm -hmm. wanted it so bad Mm -hmm. that she made a second one and then had it built. And I'm I'm just going to harp on it for a minute. You're just going to have to deal with it. She had it built and then had a failure within, what, two years after building it? It was very quick. It was built in 2020. The, the, The failure started to seep in, but I didn't recognize it in 2021. I didn't want to admit it because of what we right. talked about. And in 2022, it was all but an all-out failure. So in this moment, because of this, you you changed so many things about you as a person where you didn't want to rotate crops Mm-mm. and you did end up rotating crops and you gave up on this dream temporarily of having your tomatoes in there. And then you didn't even have a lot of losses of your tomatoes from not being in the cage bay like so many things happened in here that it's it's beautiful to see that occur and to see somebody grow like that live from saturday night live you know (laughs) live on the air to see and hear Mm -hmm. somebody step out of their comfort zone i mean you know you guys listening probably grow things and they're like, I'm only going to grow this way, this, that, that. And it, it's hard to step out of that comfort mm-hmm. zone. It's hard to be like, I'm very successful at doing X, mm-hmm. but I'm going to try Y. And we're going to hope to God that it works out because you get one shot to grow. And especially Batavia, she gets one shot to grow yeah. a tomato, one shot a year. And if she doesn't get them, she doesn't get them in the story. And she's got to go to the grocery store and get a bland ass tomato that mm. was picked green. So, I mean, it's it's amazing to see, and I applaud you for that. 
And you may not get another good comment like that next year or in five years, but this one should last you for a while because it was big. It's big, big news. Breaking I, um, news. The, the amount of change that I experienced as a gardener, right? And it, it's absolutely a, all of this you've said. It's not an overstatement. It's exactly accurate. It's as I hear it is exactly who I am and why it was a struggle in the way that it was. And, you know, we're we're spending this time here because this is just one example, like kind of you've seen live. Right. But this could be anything within the garden for anyone. Yeah. Right. It could be any method, any planting. Um, when I look back, you also have to tackle on the years of struggle prior to having the first cage baby even built that led me to building the cage baby. You know? mm-hmm. like, yeah. So this has been a long sorted tale and what it's. And again, I mentioned this when we talked about how well the tomatoes did. It absolutely allowed me to trust myself more as well as a gardener and that's that's the thing that's hard it's like once you get a thing that's working it's very easy to keep on trucking along even when it doesn't work that well you can convince yourself well maybe i'll just i'll give it one more try right and that's how i got to tomatoes in 2022 still in the cage baby so i appreciate you noting that i don't know if in my reflection we're not at new year new me yet so we're not full on in reflection for me i don't know if i really recognized that I didn't recognize what you pointed out, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if that helps. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think it allowed you to trust yourself. I don't think that's what I think it allowed you to gain more confidence in yourself and your growing. I kind of see think, those as the same thing. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I see confidence and trust are two different things in my mind. Like you, you, you trust that you're going to make a right decision, mm-hmm. but the confidence comes from your knowledge and what you've grown over the years. And I think... Mm-hmm, as a mm-hmm. you know especially if you've been gardening as long as we have you know we've both been gardening you know 15 years it, it, it's it's one of those things where you you've got to you've got to well and here's the, where the trust and the confidence you got to trust that you have the confidence and the knowledge to spread so i think you know i applaud you for that well thank you but this one is going to be a little bit long as I just got a message from Leonard about because <laughs> we've got to, we've got to do our listener question of the day. Um, and this is a good one, actually. Very good. So this comes from the Backyards Community Garden. Uh, wasn't directed completely to us, but I feel like it is definitely something that we should talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill writes, as I prepare my garden for the winter, I had a question and I wanted to run by you all. This year, I used way more grow bags and five-gallon buckets than I had in years past with much success. So, first of all, congratulations on that. I was curious, for those of you that use them, what do you do with them in the off-season? I was thinking about dumping them out into a pile and then reusing it next year. But now, I might just cover with fresh leaf choppings and treat it just like a bed and amend the soil in the spring. Any vice is appreciated. Um, first of all, this is a hot topic mm-hmm. amongst the gardening world, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the record and say right off the bat, I think Bill hit the nail on the head. I think he's got his intuition is very good. What do you think? I actually disagree. Do you? Why? Yeah, yeah. So I think well. And I this is why in. it's a hot topic because now we're about to go into blows, everybody. Yeah. So, hey, Bill, um, I disagree. And the only way that I think I could be swayed back, you hear the rigidness, you hear that? <laughs> the only way I could be swayed back is it depends on the growing area he's in. So, looking at the garden, he still has a lot of like, you know, healthy looking plants. So, I'm thinking maybe he's in a warmer area. Mm-hmm. If he is in a colder climate, like I am, I am team, whether it's the end of the season or the beginning of the next season, get all of that soil together, amend it, and then put it back into the bags. The I don't have the numbers on it, but the way that soil is depleted in any container, I think that we don't give enough credit to. 
right? You know, so it's a pain in the butt to do that, dump it all out, you know, especially with the number that I see that he has. Um, but taking one of these raised beds that he has, piling it all on, Again, for him, I maybe even would do it in the spring, earlier spring, and then amend that and then load it back up. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to give you more soil than you probably had. Like I would add um, probably some um, peat moss to it or cocoa cori if you use that instead. Um, I'd probably add a bit of compost to it to amend it, and then I'd add some fertilizer to it. That's going to increase your volume, so be conscious of that. You may need one more grow bag. The reason why I wouldn't kind of just add clippings is what he said clippings and fresh leaves leaves the reason why i only wouldn't do that is where is the the additional you know life that you're adding to it where's the additional organic matter when Um, it breaks down over the winter yeah the leaves are going to break down but is that enough to feed based on what he's grown in all season you know So I was going to add a caveat in, and that was basically the same thing you said, is when you dump it all out, amend it all in a pile and Mm -hmm. let it sit. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that he's right on track with it for the simple fact of, you know, putting leaves, um, leaves, what what am I, five (laughs) leaves in the, uh, you know, on top of it, mulching it. I mean, that stuff helps break it down. What I've done, because, you know, my container... And I'm only going to focus on my big containers. I've got like 20 gallon containers. Maybe I don't know how big they're. They're they're big, but I'll take and turn that stuff in to the soil when it's done, mm-hmm. and just you know let it sit over the winter. But I always come back and fertilize it, put compost on it or something. But the the effect of amending it, I think, is very good. It's it's hard with a container because. The, what I like about it is he's like I'm just going to treat it like a bed, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's. Even though it's a container, it's still a bed. It's a micro bed, right? It's a micro garden bed. Yeah, I think and I'm trying to go back to to look at the question in a little bit more detail. It wasn't about whether or not he should reuse the soil. It was kind of Mm-mm. dump or just kind of amend in place. And it's harder to actually get the good stuff back into those bags based on how much uh, space you have between the soil line and the top of the bags. It's easier for me to actually get everything worked up if I put it in a pile. Um, I do agree. Whenever I load that back in, I'm going to put leaves on it. So if he did it this fall, I put leaves on top, you know, straight Mm -hmm. leaves on top as mulch. Now, the other note, I get this question often based on the number of containers that I grow in and I do grow in a few grow bags and containers in general, though. The question is, what do you do in the winter? Like, what do you do with them? And the best version of me would, put them all in one empty bed, cover it with plastic or put them all in the garage, which is never going to happen because my garage is packed to the brim with other garden stuff uh, because of the amount of snow that we get. My containers are oftentimes sopping wet. Even the ones with with um, quite a bit of drainage are sopping wet come spring because of all of the snow. So that goes back to where is Bill located? Do they get heavy snows? Um, and so I say all that to say the composition of his soil in the spring could be very different based on the weather that he gets over the next three or four months. Um, Yeah. This is actually a bad question for an episode where we're already an hour over. This is a episode, a question that we should have had a whole episode on. And I'm mad that you picked it. Like the passion I have around this is, is, uh, it's pretty high. But yeah. Well, we can do another episode about it at some point. It's not the end of all. <laughs> Excuse I me. I don't think that the way that he's leaning is wrong necessarily. But if it were me no. in my space, I do the uh, the first option that he described. So I'm totally different than you. Mm-hmm. I just leave my my containers out, and if they're wet, then I don't have to water. You know, the plant will use it up. That's how I look at it, and um, I've never had too many issues with that that I know of. So, but that's um, the, the difference between how much snow you and I get. And the best version of me would do what I described. I, I'm trying to think if I've ever, I think I accidentally did it one year. Um, most of my containers stay in their place. They're sopping wet. And that's maybe that's in part why I'm um, biased to pile them in one space because they're too wet to grow in in the spring. I'd have to wait for them to dry out. That's how wet they are, like dripping wet, like mud, basically. Yeah. Um, but again, that may not be his experience based on how wet his winter is. Throw some sand in it. Sand fixes everything. Okay. I'm joking. Or pile it all um, up in a space and 
Yeah, I mean, I think dumping them out in the space allows the air to get to it. Mm -hmm. It allows you to amend it. And it also allows the bacteria from the soil to interact with the topsoil mm-hmm. to create mycorrhizae that will give you more nutrients. I think there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, and then as you turn it and you go to put it back in, you're going to naturally lose that water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think and you, you can even cover that pile at the same time. So, um, it you know, he's got a fair amount of containers, so it'd be work. But if he's having success with it, then by all means, go for it, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, live your best life. Um, I think this is one of those topics, uh, like many gardening topics, that are very um, targeted to certain areas Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. need to be treated in different ways, as we're seeing here. Um, The fact that this was uh, posted a day ago and there's still greens in leads me to believe that he is in a more southern, warmer climate. Mm -hmm. So you may not have that issue. But, um, you know, a little bit of compost goes a long way for a pot, especially a handful of fertilizer. And I'm zooming in and some of these plants look like like if he's going to be growing throughout this year, that changes things, too, because some of these containers won't be as dormant as -hmm. they would be like if you're in the Midwest or something. So the plants use the water that's in there. I mean, if you have plants growing in the wintertime, they will stay drier because they will use the water to an extent. Mm -hmm, Mm hmm. <clears throat> but well apparently yeah, everybody question, we need Bill. to have a full episode about this mm-hmm. so um stay tuned for at some point in the near future didn't know that batavia was so passionate about this and now she's mad at me and on that note everybody please check out our links below and help support the show this is the time of year in which we try to get enough funding to go through the next year um Check out our subscription podcast, Amazon, T-shirts, all that stuff, uh, cups, mugs, you know, you name it. It's on there. Um, and, tr- and we even got hats on there now, too. So we've got hats to keep it off your face, the sun, so you don't get that almighty skin cancer. Gardeners, beware. And then remember this, everybody. I think we've accomplished the goal to learn to grow and grow for change. See ya next year Hmm. (laughs) now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time all over the world people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in thanks for checking out the show if you like what we're doing and you'd like to support us you can become a patron at patreon.com slash backyard gardens or you can be an apple subscriber and in both of those you'll get an extra episode every month you can also make a one-time paypal donation with the link below and you can get all kinds of gardening gear like t-shirts and mugs and cups from the link below at teespring and we have an amazon store which has all the products that we use and recommend in our gardens and it helps support our show and we also add to this list periodically so be sure to check it out periodically to see if there's anything that you need for your garden everything that you do including a like and a subscribe and even a review will help us learn to grow and grow for change see ya